Welcome back to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker, the weekly radio show that informs and educates you on how to buy or sell real estate with the host of the program, Barb Schlinker, owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. Now, Barb, most home sellers believe that they should leave before there are showings. But what are the best practices for showing a home and showing mistakes that agents do to home sellers and how should they be able to avoid them? Well, Richard, you know, it's up to the seller whether or not they want to be there for the showing or whether or not they want their agent there for the showing. Um, But oftentimes the buyers and their agents really want to view the property without distraction just because they want to be free to say what they want to say, to make their comments, to a lot of them are afraid to open closets and look in spaces. Um, But, you know, I, I think it depends on whether or not it's very important to the buyer to look at the home without distractions. I've even had agents have hissy fits over the inspection uh, that they want the house to themselves for the inspection. And in many cases, the sellers feel more strongly about that just because um, they may not understand the systems. And we've had so many problems with inspectors doing crazy things like just Two weeks ago, I had one that was told by me and told by the seller, Mr. Inspector, that's not qualified. You cannot pull the toilet to check the sewer line, but he did it anyway, you know, and then they blew up the deal over that. So they're just kind of, um, I I can see them being very protective over their property, and I think that's fine. But if you can't leave your home, if you have to be there during the showing, that's fine. It might be best just to step out of the way, go into the garage, you know, say, hey, if you have any questions, let me know. The reason why agents want the buyer and seller separated during showings is so that they don't give things away verbally without the agents knowing about it. Um, Real estate, everything has to be in writing, right? Or... Also, so that they don't talk about all the faults of the home. They do that sometimes as well, where they'll go, oh, well, this is broken. And then this is the history on that. And, you know, the buyers are are in the initial showing. They're just wanting to get there to see if it's a place where they can visualize themselves living. So I don't know that they're really diving into the detail on the first showing. They might on the second. But if you if you cannot leave, it's okay. Just try not to hover. Try not to do the Vanna White through the house. Tell them you're available for questions. Don't highlight all of its faults. Please don't highlight your motivation for selling because agents will definitely use that bit of intelligence against you, the seller, if they're negotiating. And do your best to present the home in the best possible light. So lights on. Um, blinds open, make it look really good. Um, and it's a lot of agents will tell you, hey, you have to make your home available to be seen 24 hours a day. Well, that's ridiculous. You know, people have lives, they're cooking dinner, they're living in their homes. Um, so you can actually limit the times that you're showing and make the schedule work for you. Um, we know right now agents use the opportunity to meet a buyer for, by, uh, for the first time by responding to a request to see a home. What I mean by that is websites like Zillow and Realtor.com will actually sell leads to agents and, and they buy them because they're good leads. These are buyers out there saying, hey, I'd like to see that home. Is it, is it available? And, and they're thinking they're connecting with the listing agent, which most of the time they're not. And so uh, they don't know any better. And they're, so they'll look it up. Hey, is it available? Oh, let me check. They'll type, look on the computer and go, oh yeah, you want to see it? So the very first meeting oftentimes with the agent and the buyer is at the house. Uh, 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 our business doesn't like working that way because we really want to sit down and do a deep dive and find out what the buyer is actually looking for so we can help them find it. And we also want to know, um, you know, whether or not they're qualified because it's a waste of everybody's time if they're going out and showing properties to a buyer that cannot afford the home. It doesn't make any sense. Um and so, you know, the, the whole idea behind the showings is to what the seller is thinking, 
right now is that every showing that takes place is a buyer that loves the house, can't afford the house, wants a house like that. But sometimes that's not the case. So I'm, I'm hoping for this change that we see this summer, that some of that will improve a little bit. But many, many times the agents have never met the buyer before. I've seen them introduce themselves to buyers at the open house, and they don't know if they can qualify. A lot of people are a little too shy. A lot of agents are a little shy to ask, can you afford this home? Um, so I recently had a showing on one of my listings where the feedback was it was a ranch style home with a walkout basement. It was obvious it was a ranch style home, but the feedback was, oh, my buyer wants a two story. And we're thinking, why is he even there? <laughs> you know, it's because it was a million plus listing in Flying Horse and that agent wanted to meet a buyer that could afford a million plus listing and hopefully, right, they don't know for sure. And then maybe they can go and find them some other house. So that does take place right now on showings. And it's one of the one of the reason why agents do it is because they don't get a lot of at bats to get in front of buyers and sellers. 81% of agents sell three or less homes a year. It's very sad for me to hear that and say that. I would like that for them all to do really well. But I think the industry is deficient in teaching agents how to market, how to get business, how to retain the business, all these different things. Um, so a lot of the agents that don't really know any other way might buy their leads on the internet or you know give the buyer whatever they want just to get to meet them, get face to face in hopes that maybe they can buy a house. Um, and it's really interesting to me. I mean, I came from a military background. I was a Navy veteran. I worked in the Navy. I was an air traffic controller, followed by I worked in the intelligence field. Um, and I also worked as a pilot. So all those things were very, very proceduralized. There was definitely a way you did things. There was the way you said things. Um, and there were a lot of rules around it, but it's not the case in real estate. It's, it's a very low bar to be a real estate agent. However, the consuming public thinks that real estate agents know what they're doing. So they think whatever agent they might be with, they haven't asked them, what kind of expertise they have, either how long have they been in the business or how many homes they've sold. They typically don't ask those questions. But typically it's only in this state, only one month of school to be a licensed real estate agent. And my experience was, and it still to this day hasn't changed very much. When I got my license, you hang your license with a, a quote, employing broker. And they basically just send them out there and go, go sell earn some commission and, and give me some of it. <laughs> That's how it works. And so it's it's really sad. It took me years and years to actually go and seek and find the training on how to do things. Like it took me 10 years to get formal training on actually how to show a home. And um, just that one little thing, how to show a home is very, very important because the way you show a home it's not necessarily a Vanna White. You're not really trying to talk the buyer into it. You need to know up front what the buyer wants, first of all. And then you have to basically ask for their feedback. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a very open communication because you want to know from the buyer what are their wants, what are their needs. And then when they're in the home, what are their likes and what are their dislikes if that home is not right to find the right one for them. And most people don't get that kind of training. Um, they also don't know much about showing etiquette and there are a lot of mistakes that happen there. I don't think they're intentional. They do things like forget to lock doors, forget to turn off lights if those are the instructions. Um, they um, use the restrooms, which it, it, you know, if they do it properly, it's not a problem, but if they leave a mess, it's a problem. Um, or sometimes they, the, probably the most irritating thing for a lot of sellers is maybe they'll schedule a showing and then not show up and not cancel. And, and that's very frustrating because the sellers are going to a lot of trouble 
in order to get prepared for the showing, make the house look right. Maybe they're gathering up dogs and kids and cats and, and God knows what so that they can make the house available to be shown. So that's a lot of effort for a seller. And then the agent doesn't even show up. So it's very, very frustrating when those kind of things happen. Um, so, you know, I've, I've had some experiences. I've had kids jumping on beds. I've had them leave crumbs on the counter. I've had them track snow or mud in the house, uh, I, all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's really not okay. Um, I've had them, this has happened a couple of times where they leave either the existing code in the lockbox or they leave the lockbox wide open with the key hanging out. I mean, that's just malpractice in my view. Uh, those kind of things happen quite a bit. Um, and, and I've had them change the lockbox code on me. <laughs> Can you imagine this, Richard? Um, I've had them not leave when they were asked to leave. It's just, it's kind of insanity, but it's just common sense of what your mama probably taught you that when you go in somebody's house, you have to respect their property. My name is Barb Schlinker. I'm the broker owner of Your Home Soul Guaranteed Realty and the host of the show. And it's called Your Real Estate Voice. And we're talking about how do you avoid problems with showings. And if you are thinking of making a move, give us a call at 719-301-3900 or go to barbhasthebuyers.com. Richard? You're listening to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker, host of the program. And this is Your Home Sold Guaranteed. Oops. Three, two, one. You're listening to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. She's the host of the program, and you can reach her at 719-301-3900. We're talking, Barb, about moving. And what are some agents showing nightmares? And more importantly, what can home sellers do about them? Well, um, make sure you lock up your valuables. That's one important thing that you should do because um, it, it just stuff happens, right? Um, it, 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 you could have some dishonest people that might lift something. So just make sure your valuables are protected. Um, and then also make sure that you're aware, like it's a really good idea to put cameras up around the house. I think that's very helpful because I, a lot of people just don't know, um, you know, what's going on in their home. And it might be good. It probably is the best source of feedback on the showing when you hear what some of these agents are saying or what some of the buyers are saying about the house. So it's super, super important. Um, but make sure when you are showing that first impressions absolutely matter. So make sure the home smells good. Don't cook any heavy smells uh, before the showing. It's okay to play a little music leave the lights on, make it look like a model. Uh, we also put up placards around the house because we know a lot of times what is written is not really read. So we, we make sure any non-obvious stuff is out there for the buyer to see during the showing. And um, if you have to be home, just step out of the way and also make sure you hire the team that has systems and processes in place to avoid these kind of problems. So if you are thinking of making a move, give us a call at 719-301-3900 or go to barbhasthebuyers.com. You're listening to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. If you're thinking of making a move, call Barb at 719-301 on Boulder Lane up in Woodmore Mountain at 129.9, a fabulous townhome with two masters on Riley Grove at 354.999. That's over by Peterson Air Force Base. Beautiful home on 35 acres with a massive detached barn in the mid threes, a, a great townhome at Briargate on Smoke Tree at 3099. Uh, we also have a fabulous home on Snowbird Drive. This is in the mid fives, beautiful remodeled home and a really, really cute manufactured home on 35 acres out in Calhan with great views at 424.999. A fabulous home on Allegiance Drive, very close to the uh, Air Force Academy, priced at 599 with amazing views. And then we have two homes in Peyton, one on Gull at 7199 and one on the Cowie Way at 6749. We also have this stunning, very modern looking home up in Crystal Park at a million eighty four thousand with an RV garage 
and a 35 acre lot in Woodland Park priced at $4.99 and coming up some beautiful homes. We've got one in Briargate on Radcliffe in the mid fives. This thing has fabulous views with a main level master. And we also have another fabulous Peregrine home coming very soon. So to find out about all of our listings, go to barbhasthebuyers.com and look them up right there. And if you are thinking of making a move, give us a call, 719-301-3900 or go to barbhasthebuyers.com. Richard? You've been listening to Your Real Estate Voice. It airs every Saturday right after Larry Kudlow. And if you're thinking of making a move, call Barb at 719-301-3900 or visit barbhasthebuyers.com. Remember, you can see replays of the show on Barb's YouTube channel, Barb Has the Buyers, or you can listen to the podcasts on all of the popular platforms, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, many, many others. Thanks for listening. And to reach out to Barb, call 719 301 30 900. Great talking with you, Barb. Have a great week. Thank you. Have a fabulous weekend.